Fear Destruction. He's good at it and you probably want to know how he pulls it off. There's something unique about what Vicente Luque brings to the welterweight division. As a well-rounded fighter, this devastator has a set of attributes that make him very dangerous. There seems to be a mysterious aura about him where fans know he can devastate the opponent, but they can't quite figure out how or why he's able to do it so effectively. Whether it's his effective submissions or his infamous lead hook, this is where we take a deep look to finally reveal how the silent assassin pulls off all the destruction. Here we explore the heart of what makes Vicente Luque so effective. We'll be taking a look at his fighting style, breaking down his signature moves, explaining the secret behind his devastating shots, and his wicked submissions. This is a breakdown by the fight dialogue and striking thoughts. There's a lot of cool stuff to share here, so let's get right into it. Vicente Luque typically likes to pressure forward and force to engagement, but across his career, he's shown a diverse set of tools that are really effective against different styles. And the beauty behind his game is that his techniques are very simple, but they're very effective. Honing something as simple as the basics to such a high level can produce such effective results and this is what we're going to look at with Vicente Luque. When you look at Vicente Luque, what you get is a fighter with excellent counter striking fundamentals and this expands across different dimensions. Against taller opponents, he has a variety of really effective counters to handle them. His go-to counter against a longer jab is to fire his overhand right over the top. He's dropped so many people with this counter from Nico Price to Tyra Rooney and anyone else unfortunate enough to attempt picking at Luque with their jab. What makes his counter effective is that he doesn't wind the shot up that much. It's generally thrown straight from the guard and this is effective because by throwing it straight from the guard, you travel the least amount of distance, meaning the shot lands that much faster when you throw in the shot. There are fighters out there who typically wind up the shot and it makes it really hard to land because the shot has to travel farther. So if we look at an example of Chuck Liddell and his infamous overhand, as powerful as it is, it has to travel a really far distance making the timing that much harder to land. And you can see in this illustration that if Chuck was to throw his overhand right, you see in this green line how much he would have to travel compared to the red line if he were just to throw it from his guard. This does make a big difference in timing because the less you have to travel, the sooner you can reach your target. In his fight with Randy Brown, Lucas showcased how effective he was at shutting down a very boxing-centric fighter. In fact, he's a stylistic nightmare against any fighter who's very boxing heavy. Randy is a long fighter and he had the reach advantage of the jab, but Luke would consistently shut down the jab and this never allowed Randy to establish any kind of good rhythm. It wasn't just the overhand that would constantly stuff Randy's jab attempts, Luke would constantly time a parry with a late kick. And this worked so well because even with Luke's reach disadvantage, Randy couldn't escape the range of Luke's kicks. This also works well because when Randy steps forward into range with his jab, he simultaneously is unable to check the kicks while coming in, and this makes Luke's timing kicks really effective. And this shows how smart Luke is at handling the overuse of the jab. Now what exactly makes Vicente Luque's lead hook so devastating? I studied a lot of footage and I realized he has more than one way of landing his destructive hooks. His first signature counter is his lead hook right from the guard, and he's dropped so many fighters with this signature hook, and if for some reason the fighter manages to survive it, you would typically see the fight progress with one side of the opponent's face completely torn up with his nasty left hook. There's a certain rhythm Luke uses when he throws his lead hook, he typically throws it when the opponent is attacking his left side. When the opponent throws on his left side, Luke will almost always throw a very short counter lead hook in retaliation. The reason why it's so effective is because Luke is very efficient with the lead hook. He doesn't wind the hook up very much and he throws it nearly from his guard position. It's so efficient that a lot of times it looks like a jab. In principle, if you throw your punch right from the guard, it doesn't have to travel as far meaning that you'll land much sooner. Second, when the opponent throws on the left side, the majority of the time the natural shot that comes next is the rear hand. However, this is a losing game because Luke always counters with a short hook using that lead hand. His lead hand is generally always closer to the opponent and because he's throwing it using a short hook style, it almost always lands first. On the off chance that they connect following the shot, Luke always seems to have the edge because he can withstand the trade when firing his lead hook. Luke's lead arm is usually chambered close to the opponent, so this tends to land first because of his short hook style. And even if they throw onto his right side, the counter works even better because you're going to see here that when Barbara Rennie throws onto his right side, the lead arm is chambered very close and you can see that it actually is able to land sooner than Barbara Rennie's because his shot is close. 
see Barbarina's shot is too far out. And the shorter hook usually wins, especially right from the guard. You'll see across multiple opponents that he's dropped various people using this principle. Intercept on the same side using that short lead hook. Because he's so efficient with his short hook, this creates a timing that his opponents have a very hard time beating, making this lead hook incredibly dangerous. Then you combine this with the fact that he has incredible chin. These attributes make him very dangerous opponent to exchange with in the pocket. This counter is awkward since fighters don't typically expect counter shots coming from the same side that they're attacking on. They don't always expect it from that side, so countering on that same side can effectively jam the opponent from following up their next shot. This is typically what you would see from Vicente throwing this kind of counter shot. There is a downside though, because you're absorbing the shot on the guard. If you throw with good power, this will force you to sometimes miss your shot because you're countering in the same direction that the power is coming from. So in these instances, you're going to see that Typically, Luke is going to be thrown off balance attempting his counter shot on the same side when he takes too much power. There is one neat trick that can be used to counter this. I've only observed this happening once when Barbara Anna would throw his shot on one side, but his hook acted like a hand trap. So what this kind of did was that it locked Vicente's arm from countering from that side. As a result, this actually shut down his signature move and this allowed Barbara Anna to follow up with his own power shot. Hand traps can prove to be very handy at disarming the opponent's counters like when we saw Chandler using his hand trap on Geiji to prevent him from using his rear hand to counter punch. The next signature counter is where Luke will dip low to evade the opponent's attack and then throw a gazelle hook to close the distance for opponents who are trying to keep their distance. This happens to be a very devastating counter that's best to use against opponents who are trying to keep that distance. He doesn't use this often, but when he does, it's pretty nasty and it generates a lot of power. There's one more signature hook variation he likes to use, where he'll typically catch with the rear hand and then he'll come back with a slipping lead hook. Luke typically tries to catch and slip the head off just slightly to fire that lead hook. So these are some of the most common ways Vicente Luke lands his powerful lead hooks. He does it from the seam side hook counter, his catch and lead hook counter, and his dip into a lead hook. From what I observed, he gets the most meaningful shots going, usually when he's able to work his counter punching. Whether he has to press forward to force the punching exchanges, or if the opponent comes to him, as long as there is a chance to trade, Vicente Luque will carry a serious threat. And this is due to his keen ability to throw out the opponent's rhythm with his efficient short hooks. From destructive hook counters to wicked submissions, this is only half of the story. I partnered with the Fight Dialogue because they offer unique perspectives that you won't get here so you'll definitely want to finish the story off by heading over to their channel for the second part of the video where they explore more important details on Vicente Luque's game, including the finer details behind his submission game like his infamous dark stroke. You won't want to miss this so go straight to the link for the video.